achiever, achiever, achiever. What about an achiever? I was an achiever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was an achiever. I love uh, healthy uh, competition. Um, I liked being around people that was accomplished. Um, even being, you know, a top director, a lot of people came to me for advice. I am currently pursuing my MBA. Um, I am an event coordinator, um, business development coordinator. So um, business development coordinator is my current job title and um, entrepreneur is my proclaimed title. I am a wife of almost 16 years. I'm a mother of three, two girls and a boy. I work for Wells Fargo, um, but my passion is doing hair. Um, the definition of inadequacy, in my opinion, is it's a mindset. It's a mindset. It's where you place yourself, what you believe, your belief system about yourself. Feeling as though I'm not capable of accomplishing something that may be a challenge. Um, it could be something where you feel defeated yourself or it can be something that you're made to feel by others. So inadequacy is, is a mindset. It's really an attack um, of your mind. Um, and if you do not control that mindset, you will find yourself in a wheel um, going in circles and not reaching uh, a, a destination, so to speak. I experienced emotional roller coasters where um, I would be on an all-time high. I would be achieving awards, accepting rings, winning cars um, through, the, through the business. I would go to uh, seminars like the 10X Growth Con where um, I would hear from speakers like uh, Kevin Harrington, the As Seen on TV guy, um, and all of these top uh, billionaires. Um, yet I will wake up the next day and feel so low and feel so empty and not adequate enough um, as if I hadn't just accomplished uh, what I thought was my biggest dream. And I learned that that feeling was a feeling of inadequacy, a feeling of not feeling um, enough. Uh, it has something to do with being a perfectionist. And um, that's when I immediately start looking into uh, you know, research about that feeling. Is this a real thing? And I learned that it actually is. A lot of people suffer from feeling inadequate. I felt like I was inadequate because I didn't have a uh, college education or, you know, MD behind my name or some type of high degree. Um, so I felt like I couldn't accomplish my goals and my dreams because I didn't have a piece of paper to represent my accomplishments. I feel inadequate often, um, specifically when it comes to parenting, and now I'm about to tear up, but uh, one of the things that make me feel inadequate is though my son and I have a very positive relationship, I pour so much into other people. I pour into my son, but most times I'm exhausted when it comes to my own household because I spend my day developing and creating and pouring life and, you know, helping people become the best version of themselves. So when it comes to my son, I feel like I come up short. He is excellent and he's great in his own right but I do not feel like I give him what I can, what I know is inside of me. That makes me feel very inadequate as a parent.
Um, I'm the youngest of seven, so I never had to feel like I had to do anything for myself. It was always, I was more or less made to feel like, um, and I know that they meant well, but they did everything for me. So I didn't really have an opportunity to really learn about what I want to do and how I want to be. Um, I was just kind of told, this is what you do. Do this, do that. Um, so I think because of those lack of experiences, I've just become accustomed to kind of living my life through other people. Self-criticism is another. I am my biggest critic. The older I get, the more I'm lightening up on myself and letting myself off the hook. But that also comes from, you know, practicing, studying. I am a certified life coach as well. So, you know, with my studying of, of my art and craft and perfecting it, I'm implementing some of those things into my life and, and more importantly just learning to let myself off the hook. But before that, <laughs> I was my biggest critic. Um, I was praying to God to show me what He sees in me um, because I don't feel like I'm enough all the time and God gave me a vision of a home and it had great curb appeals, just the beautifulest home ever. And he also showed me how there was many rooms in the home and that deep down in the basement, in the dungeon, um, is where I kept myself. Um, and he gave me a vision of a home where the blinds stayed shut. Um, and basically what I got from that is God wanted to reveal to me that if I allowed the blinds to open and allowed the light to shine through and even come outside of that home and look from the outside in, that I would too see just how beautiful I am and uh, how worthy I am. Last but not least, my husband. You know, he, he sees something in me that I didn't see in myself. And so for him to encourage me the way that he has um, with becoming a stylist, it's been um, it's been amazing um, for him to to see it, to see greatness in me enough to um, come out of pocket, you know, invest in me, not just with time and energy and um, conversation, but with love and with finances. It's definitely um, a good thing to have people around you. So when you feel those, um, those little pieces of fear or you feel those little um, things of inadequacy that creep up um, unaware, you have those people around you to be like, uh-uh, you got this, you can do it. My grandmother, I think she sees something in me that reminds her of herself or something. She always tell me I remind her of her sister so much, which was her sister she adored. It was her older sister. So she sees a Mag in me, you know, and, um, and a Mag was a great woman. And I think my grandmother just always felt that I had the ability to be everything that I am and more. So. I would say she's my biggest cheerleader because even if she's not on the sidelines cheering, she's praying for me. Um, I believe in my heart she prays for me daily, you know, and I think one of her prayers is, Lord, help her become everything that I know she is that she may not. Sacrificing all my certain